If you fancy having another go at two point track, a slightly more tricky shot, then let's go and import another shot. Double click into the project panel. I'm gonna go in and grab this bike MP4 file. So this is an MP4 file, so it's more compressed. It has less information in, and therefore it gives us a little bit more work to do with our track. So I'm gonna import this file. Uh, I'll bring it in in its entirety. I can see it's full HD, it's 133 frames, running at 25 frames a second. I'll just drag it down, make a new comp with it, and I'll play it back to see what we've got first of all. So we've got a guy on a bike here. It's uh, shot semi-slow motion, but you can see the camera is quite juddery, and uh, it's gonna be a bit trickier for us to um, track Let's have a go at tracking. Again, it's gonna be a two point track on here because we want to track this bike. We wanna track the movements on it. So let's go up to layer, new, null object. That will make null two because this is the second null we've made um, in this project. Uh, I can rename it to bike null. That will make it unique and often worth naming generic After Effects layers, something more useful. And then I'll select bike. Another way to open up the tracker is I can right mouse button click. And from the right mouse button option, I've got just beyond halfway down track and stabilize options. So I can go down here and say, oh yeah, I wanna track the motion. Again, that takes me into the layer mode, gives me a track point and gives me my tracker panel down here. Okay, so what do we want to track on this? Well, um, there's a, several areas on this bike that we could track. Thankfully, the shutter speed is quite high, so there isn't too much blur happening on here. That's helpful, but the movement is quite jumpy. I definitely wouldn't want to track the spokes. I wouldn't want to track the feet because I want to track the bike moving. So I'm going to try tracking uh, these points on the wheels. So I'll take my first track point and I'll move the region of interest over to the center there. It's a circle. Again, it's looking for contrast. So the more contrast, the better. The movement is quite big on this shot. So I'm going to have to make this search area quite big, maybe nearly the size of the wheel might be enough. And again, I want to do a two point track, so I'm gonna enable rotation and scale, and I'll move my track point two over here. And again, making that search area quite big. I'm gonna go and start tracking this through a frame at a time. So as I go frame by frame by frame, I can see that's starting off doing a good job, but there's gonna be some pretty big jumps coming up. And I'll definitely want to just watch it. He's bringing up the front wheel. It seems to be tracking on okay. And it's doing a decent job. Now, if I play it through, it's much more likely to have errors. Let's see how it gets on. There it's gone. It's gone, they've both gone. So if I have a track that jumps off like this does, I want to navigate back. Don't track in reverse. Just want to navigate back to see where did it start going wrong. Looks like it went well, it was wrong there. Here, around about here. So the first thing I can do is I can go in and just find where it went wrong, which is that's the first frame where it went wrong. I can go in and try to track it one frame at a time and already I'm getting a better result. When I played it through, it wasn't doing it that accurately. Now when I go through, it's actually finding it. So this is just proof that tracking it frame at a time will give you more accurate results. Yeah, it's gonna take longer. And some things you can just track and they'll run through very quickly and that's good because that'll save you a lot of time. But in this case, it's just worth spending the extra time just going through checking it frame by frame. If you want a decent looking tracking result, then it's highly recommended that you spend a bit more time tracking it through. Oh, it's gone. 
So if I go back here, that was working. The next frame, this time it's it's gone. I don't know why it's jumped there. You can always predict it. Now when it goes wrong, you want to go into the track point and just move it back. And that should be here. That's where it should be. I've corrected that. If I now go to the next frame, it's going to continue its correction. Going to continue, 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 continue. That's fine. We often have these problems with very big jumps of movement because the tracking is having to search quite a big area and it, in that case got it wrong. We will also have big problems if we've got lots of motion blur or things go out of focus or if the bike um, wheel went out of frame completely, well, there's not a lot we can do then because it's not going to have any chance of tracking it. If I continue through now, you can see when I let it automatically track, it totally got it wrong. It was up here by this time, but as I continue to go through a frame at a time, it's just correcting those points. So you'll see these error points just getting recorrected until it gets to the end of our timeline. And then it's done. I can see now I'm still locked on to the center of those wheels by the end of the shot. So tracking it through manually uh, frame at a time gets better results and then when it does go wrong you can go in there and tweak it. I'm going to hit apply and that's now going to apply the two point track to a null. I can go and close that down. If I select my null, my null will usually appear where the center point of the first track point was which is here. But as I navigate through time, see when he jumps up, I can see it's rotating and moving. Okay, let's check how effective the track has been by popping in some objects. I'm gonna pop some text in there first. So I'll grab my type tool. I'm going to just type bike, double click it, and just go and grab a slightly more interesting font. Any font you have installed will show up here. Now, I, I don't have any other more interesting fonts here. I'm a little bit stuck. So when we have a Creative Cloud account, if we go up to our creative cloud icon there, we can navigate over and we have lots of other things as well as access to our applications. We have other things in the creative cloud. Uh, very useful, we have uh, fonts. So if we go down here, we can see we have lots of different fonts. These are the fonts that we can choose to have enabled. But if I hit browse more fonts, I can open up the browser. And then from here, it opens up my Adobe fonts and I can go and find some fonts. Hmm, this one looks quite interesting. If I click on this one, then I can see, oh yeah, I quite like this font. I can select it and I can say activate it. That will now activate it. This is called Backspacer. If I want to find other fonts, maybe like handwritten fonts, I can search for, um, oops. style of fonts there. That's an interesting one as well. I'll view that family of fonts and say, I like that. I can go, yeah, activate that font. When they're activated, then I'll have access to them in other Adobe applications. Uh, depending on your internet connection, it is going to have to download them. So uh, if I just jump back to After Effects for a second and have a look in here. I've downloaded a couple of extra fonts. So this uh, second one I downloaded was called uh, Critter and the first one was called Backspacer. So there you go. Backspacer is there. If I select it, I've now got that font on there. Or if I type in Crit, there's my Critter. I've got that one in there. That one looks pretty good. So I'm going to go for that. And pop that of where my bike is. 
And to see that with the shot, I'll link the bike text to the bike null. I'll play it back. Okay, and because this is shot with such a fast shutter speed, on the actual footage, I'm not seeing any motion blur. It's really sharp even when he's jumping up there. So I'm not gonna enable motion blur. If I did enable motion blur, the text wouldn't sit so well with the video. Um, so I'm gonna keep it nice and sharp. And if I didn't want text, for example, I could go and add something else. So let's go and add maybe, uh, I'll colorize the wheels a little bit so I can go up to my elliptical tool and I'm gonna draw an ellipse. So I'll zoom in here and I'll start and draw an ellipse. Now remember, if we don't have a layer selected, we'll create a shape. Because I had the text layer selected, what have I done? I've made a mask on the text layer. That is a mistake. So I'll press mask, delete that. I wanna make sure I don't have any layers selected if I wanna make a shape. So now back to my ellipse tool, click and drag. If I want it to be perfectly circular, I'll hold shift when I'm dragging like that. And then once that's done, I'll go back to my selection tool and just position that a little bit better over the wheel. And I want to maybe link that to the bike null. There we go, that's looking good. And I might want two of those, so I'll go into the shape layer. Now I could just duplicate the shape layer and have one behind, or I could duplicate the contents within the shape. For this uh, example, I'll just duplicate the layer. So I'll just call this, uh, I'll duplicate it first, and I'll move the duplicate back there. And I'll call this one back wheel, and this one front wheel. Okay, I've now stylized that. I can do any number of other things I wish to. For example, uh, I could add some glow to those. So I'll just go over to my Vixen presets and type in glow. I'll grab a standard stylized glow. If I do it first on the front wheel, you can see I've got a little warmish glow kicking off of that now. It's feeling a bit more neon. If I want to increase the radius, that's looking better. I'll increase the radius, increase the intensity, or reduce it. That's looking good. I like that, so I'll copy that. I'll select the glow, copy it. I'll go to the back wheel, edit, and I'll paste that. Got the same glow on the back wheel. That's good. I might just be tempted to add a little echo effect on here. So if I type in echo, pop that onto, I might just have this on the back wheel, echo. It's gonna make a duplicate of it offset in time. A bit hard to see. So I'm gonna increase the number of echoes. Ooh, look at that. I don't go too far, but they're not only duplicating the echo, but they're duplicating the glow as well. Uh, I'll give it maybe 10 or 15, and then the decay, rather than just staying as these little kind of slinky kind of echoes, I'll bring the decay down. So over time, I've now got this little kind of trace happening off it. Actually, I might like that on the front wheel as well. So I'll just copy the echo, Command C to copy, go to the front wheel, Command V to paste, And there we go. I've done a two point track on a more tricky shot. But once the tracking is done and applied to the null, then we have full creative freedom with what we do with the results.